and we hope the two giant nations and the Emirates will be able to help us through. And the largest economies that have benefited immensely to do more really fast because they have need healing and it's crying for attention more quickly. Thank you very much. It's not easy to make out what Tinubu is trying to say. That explains the look on this guy's face. Some part of his speech is slurred. It might be stage fright. He's not used to speaking to international audience. He's used to speaking to APC yes men and ladies, where they sing his praises and all that. He also showed signs of slurred speech during the presidential campaign. In some situations, he made completely meaningless statements like the infamous Balablu and Bulaba. He also physically tested a microphone with his tongue. Instead of the normal testing one, testing two, testing the microphone, he confused test with taste. Anyway, back to the subject of this video. It is no longer news that Nigeria went to Dubai for the COP28 climate conference with 1,411 delegates. 25 out of the 45 cabinet ministers participated in the conference. That's about 55%. There are also many others that shouldn't be in the government-sponsored list. That includes his sons and other civil servants who shouldn't be there. Even Shagori was named as confidant to the president. These guys know how to waste money. Since Nigerians discovered the massive number of delegates that participated in the climate conference in Dubai, it has piqued the interest of many people, including Pito B, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the last presidential election. In criticizing the reckless waste of scarce foreign exchange, he said that Nigeria's delegation matched that of China, but China's 2024 budget is $4 trillion, while that of Nigeria is $33 billion. He called it a sad irony that the giant of Africa could match a country whose annual budget is about $2,800 per head compared to Nigeria's $165 per head, that China has a very high human development index, ranking 79 out of 191. But Nigeria, with a low HDI, ranks 163 out of 191. Also, Nigeria has more people living in multidimensional poverty than China, despite the fact that Chinese population is more than 1 billion. In other words, China can afford to send 10,000 delegates, but they still chose to send only 1,411. Why is Nigeria that is supposed to send fewer delegates matching China? Imagine how the Chinese will feel because they lend Nigeria money. In conclusion, Peter B said that Nigeria needs to de-emphasize unnecessary ceremony and showmanship as a mode of government behavior, that they need to tie spending to necessity and national priority. This is common sense, but corrupt politicians will always make it look like rocket science because of their selfish interest. By the way, P2B has always been consistent in emphasizing the need to be prudent in managing state resources. He's on record as the only governor that left millions of dollars when he left office as Alhambra State Governor. This can be seen in one of his speeches he made many years ago, but before we see that, let's see this chart by CNN. In this chart, you will see the countries with the highest greenhouse gas emissions in 2022. China is the largest emitter of greenhouse gases, followed by United States, European Union, India. Nigeria is not even up to the first 10, but they still went to the conference with one of the largest delegates. What were they doing there? What did they want to learn there? In this next chart, you see the per capita greenhouse emissions for the top 20 emitters. Nigeria is among them, but they are still minute compared to countries like Saudi Arabia, Australia, Russia, Canada, even United States. So what this shows is that Nigeria didn't need to participate in this COP28 in Dubai with more than 20 people, at worst 30 delegates. But they had to go there with more than a thousand delegates to do what? They are just wasting money unnecessarily. 
they are seeing this as a jamboree where they will go and celebrate and wine and dine, forgetting the fact that millions of Nigerians don't know where their next meal will come from. In this chart, you will see that among the first 18 countries, only Nigeria still has room to accommodate climate pollution. They are not polluting their environment as other countries. As you can see, all of them, European Union, Japan, US, South Korea, all of them have passed their own share of pollution. So what it means is that Nigeria can afford not to participate in this conference because they are not the ones that are contributing to the climate change. It shows that Nigeria is very low in production, so we are not emitting gases as productive countries. So one wonders, why waste thousands or even millions of dollars in this conference when Nigeria doesn't need to be there because we are not polluting as high as other countries? Now, let's see how P2B would have done things differently as he explains how he handled such situations when in the government house in Anambra State. The house or governor can tell you the number of traveling budgets, logistics, the colleges of name is almost 600, 500 to 600 million. I believe you can do with, if you times again 600 times 36, I believe you can do all your travels for a third of that. You save 115. So if you look at what I've showed you now, you're going to save over 1 trillion. And I can tell you it is practical. People will say to me, Peter, how is this possible? How is it not possible? My dear, I was the governor. When I came to office, my first three, my first four, three, four trips to Abuja, I traveled with over 30 people. Over 30. Everybody have a title to be in the plane. Everybody have a title to do this. So, wait a minute. I'm the only person invited to Abuja. I pay for 30 people who have no reason to be in Abuja. They consider a problem to the traveling public. They follow me to Abuja. I'm the one who is going to go to a meeting. Because the idol and their hotel, they eat more. So I have a lot of bills to pay. In the end, every trip was costing me, every trip was costing me over 10 million. One trip. And there are times I do this four or five times in a month. So after the fourth, after the fourth, after about the third or fourth trip, I sat down and said, I want you to write name of everybody from me and tell me why and what is the purpose of this person going to be in Abuja? <laughs> what do they do? When they finish, I found out the only person that needs to go to Abuja is me. <laughs> so I said to them, leave it, because some of you must have heard Peter be travels alone. No, because the other people, I don't need them in Abuja. i give you an example. If I had taken police from Waka to Abuja, there might be about 12, 20, 15 security men. And then each time I go, let me use today's pricing. One ticket, one way, is about 17,000. Coming back is about 17,000. I found out that I can talk to the IG then, Onovo. I said, Onovo, where am I in Abuja? Give me three policemen. The other person, give me two. When I'm going, I give them 5,000, 5, which is not up the ticket of one person going. I say, give two people. Nobody followed me to Abuja. So when I call the people say, hey, ah, Peter B is traveling on his own, he's carrying his bag. I'm a young man, I can carry my bag. 